What is the value of treating your multiple sclerosis? If I control your disease up front, does that really help you out down the line? In this video, I'm going to take you along as I study a research article that answers that exact question. So don't turn away because all of that starts right now. So authors Rothstein and colleagues published in the Journal of Neurology an article entitled Association of No Evidence of Disease Activity with No Long-Term Disability Progression in Multiple Sclerosis, a Systemic Review and Meta-Analysis. So when they say systemic review, what they mean is they've gone to the medical literature and they've scoured all of it looking for all the relevant published articles on this topic. A meta-analysis is a really cool statistical design where you take information from multiple different trials and you massage the data in a way that allows you to compare it all. So it pulls all this information together and can determine a really, really powerful effect. And what they're doing here is they're studying no evidence of disease activity, which is actually my target when I treat people in multiple sclerosis clinic. That means we're shooting for no attacks, no new spots on MRI, and no change on your exam. We call that NETA-3. And they're looking at if they accomplish NETA-3 in a human being, what's the association down the line with their level of disability? Are they able to determine whether or not having NETA up front suggests that you don't get worse later? And they're going to try to answer that question first by scouring the literature in a review and second, by doing a meta-analysis of the data that they find. So let's see what they did. For starters, they went to gigantic medical databases, Medline, Embase, Cochrane database. So these are gigantic databases, and they looked across many years, 2006 all the way to 2021. And they pulled out all the articles that studied NETA-3. So that's no relapses, no new spots, no change on exam. And the rules were they had to at least have studied those patients for one to two years, and they had to at least have four years of follow-up afterwards for them to do the assessment. Now, the primary outcome was looking at no disability progression down the line. And so they were basing that on the EDSS. So the EDSS is the Expanded Disability Status Scale, and it's where the neurologist takes the neuro exam when they're doing all this kind of stuff, and we turn it into a number zero through 10. And those numbers represent the level of neurological disability that that human has. And so what they're gonna do is they're gonna compare whether or not we had NETA during at least one to two years, and then if I follow you at least for four years, what is your EDSS, and have you had any worsening disability? Now, here we get into the results. When they looked at the medical literature, they found 29 appropriate studies. Of those studies, 27 were able to be used. Now, of those 27 studies used, 16 looked at low-efficacy medicines, so these would be examples of like the first-line injections and some of the pills, and 11 of the papers looked at high-efficacy medicines, mostly the monoclonal antibodies. And they were able to use statistics to pull all of those patients from those 27 trials together. And what you see is that resulted in 10,900 people. Now here you see the power of a meta-analysis because there's no way on earth that we could actually pull off a clinical trial studying 10,900 people. And so this way we have a lot of statistical power. And what they found was, on average, the people that they followed up was 5.6 years. So that's a good enough time for the assessment they wanted to do. Then they used statistics to look at the odds ratio of having no progression versus the odds of having progression. And they can come up with a number that way. And they can figure out that number in the patients that were on low efficacy medicines, and they can figure out that number on the patients that were on high efficacy medicines. And here's what they found. When they looked at the population of people with MS that were on low efficacy medicines, if they had achieved NETA-3 in the first two years, they had a 2.3 times higher likelihood of having stable disease on average five and a half years later, which is really, really awesome. Now, if you look at people with MS on high efficacy medicines who had achieved NETA for the first one to two years, the likelihood that they had stable disease five years later was increased times three. 
So obviously, having no evidence of disease activity up front does suggest stable disease down the line, both in high and low efficacy medicines. So this confirms something that we've seen in other studies and also something I've seen in my clinic. If we are successful using disease-modifying therapies and behavioral changes to create no evidence of disease activity, meaning the human being with MS is not having attacks, they're not having new spots, and their exam is not progressing, that is prognostically very, very valuable, suggesting that five years later, they're likely to have stable disease. I love knowing that, and I'm glad to share it with you. If you'd like to nerd out some more with me, click the video that's on your screen right now. And until my next Monday morning video, or my next live stream, or even better yet, the next time I see you at the Boster Center for MS, this is Aaron Boster saying be safe and take care.